In this video, I want to talk about business and economic applications of the ideas we've learned using the derivative, um, using like the first and second derivative test to find the maximum or the minimum of a function. We can apply that to a lot of business and economic applications. So I'm just going to go through a few examples of how we would do that. So for this first example, we're looking at a revenue function. So revenue is a function of the number of units produced. All right, so if, if our revenue function looks like this, so this is negative x cubed plus 150x plus 9,375x. If that's what our revenue function is, then what we'd like to know is how many units should we produce to maximize the revenue. All right, so in general, to find the maximum or the minimum of a function, we want to find the critical points, and then we'll test those critical points to see if we actually have a maximum or a minimum. And so if you recall, to find the critical points, we take the derivative of the function and we set it equal to zero. All right, and we look for the places, we look for the values of x that would make it zero. Those would be our, our critical points. Those are the candidates uh, for being a maximum or a minimum. So let's do that with this particular function then. Uh, the derivative here is going to be negative 3x squared plus 150, whoops, that's supposed to be an x squared, which would make this 300x um, plus 9,375. All right, so there's our derivative function. Um, and we set this equal to zero. We want to try to solve for x that makes this quadratic. So we start off with the cubic, we end up with the quadratic. We want to find x that would make this equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just factor out a negative 3. So that's going to give me x squared. If I take out a negative 3, I get x squared here, but then this is going to be negative 100, right? So the negative 3 times negative 100 gives me positive 300. And then factor it out here, and I'll end up with negative... 3,125. So clearly the negative 3 doesn't have anything to do with making this 0. This whole thing will be 0 when x squared minus 100x minus 3, 1, 2, 5 equals 0. And that actually factors into, uh, we would end up with x plus 25 and x minus 125. All right, so 25 times negative 125 gives me negative 3125, and then when we add them together, we get negative 100. So we set that equal to 0. Well, this will be 0 when x equals negative 25, and this factor will be 0 when x equals 125, right? Because if either of those are 0, then their product will be 0. So clearly this one, I'm going to use another color here. Clearly this one we don't want, right, because we, we need to reduce some unit here. Um, so since we need to produce some unit, it has to be a positive number. We can't produce negative units. So it looks like this is the one that we want right here. All right. Um, and so if we produce, so our, our conjecture at this point is that this will maximize our revenue. But we should check to see that we actually end up with a maximum. So one way to do that, an easy way to do that, is to take the second derivative. Let's use the second derivative test. So here's the first derivative. So the second derivative would just be negative 6x plus 300, right? And if you recall, the way to ch use the second derivative test is we put in this value of x here, and if it's negative, it's concave down, and if it's positive, it's concave up. So the second derivative evaluated at 125 is negative 6 times 125 plus 300. Now, I don't know what this is off the top of my head, um, but I know it's going to be bigger than 300, right? So this is going to be negative, which means my function at this point, my original function, is going to be concave down, which means that this point has to be a maximum, right? It's at the top of that. So that shows that the, the maximum will occur when I produce 125 units. A further question that could be asked is what would be that maximum revenue? And we would just take this 
and put it back into the revenue function. So revenue at 125 units, that's just the computation, putting 125 in for X on each of those. And if you did that, you would find that the maximum revenue is 1,562,500. All right, so that was a pretty straightforward um, example of how we would use the derivative um, and the calculus that we've learned to find the maximum of a revenue function. In this next problem, we want to look at how do we find the production level that would minimize the average cost per unit. Just move this out of here for our next problem. All right, so what we need to remember in this case is, well, What's average cost per unit? How do we get average cost per unit? So if you recall, we denote this with a bar, C bar of X, and the cost per unit is the total cost, which C of X represents, over the total number of units produced, all right, where X is the total number of units produced, right? So cost is a function of how much you produce. That makes sense, right? The more you, the more you make, the more it costs. Um, this gives us the average cost because this is the total cost divided by the number of things that we've made. Um, in general, the more you make, um, the more that average costs goes down, uh, at least initially, because you might have some overhead costs in terms of buying equipment or getting space to work in. Um, ultimately, though, if you produce too much, then you have storage costs, and then so it goes back up again. So there's usually a point at which um, we could, you know, a certain amount that you produce would minimize right, our average cost per unit. And that's what we want to find in this problem. So let's first find C bar of X. And it's just taking um, 400 plus 0 0.05 X plus 0 0.0025 X squared over X. And we could divide this up. We can separate this. So it's 400 over X plus 0 0.05 X over X plus... 0 0.0025x squared over x, and if we did that, we would end up with 400 over x plus 0 0.05, because that divides out, and then dividing uh, x squared by x, we would get plus 0 0.0025x. So that is our C bar, average cost, and we want to minimize that. So that's this is what we want to take the derivative of. So notice, in this case, we needed to find a new quantity first, the... Um, average cost per unit before we would take the derivative to maximize or minimize, minimize in this case. Okay, so let's take the derivative of this. So this is going to be C bar prime. Um, you might also see the notation D C bar DX. They're the same thing. Um, so we take the derivative of this. And remember, this is the same thing as 400 x to the negative 1. So we take the derivative of that, we will end up with negative 400 x to the negative 2 or negative 400 over x squared. The derivative of a constant is 0, and the derivative of something like this we know is just, we just can um, get back the coefficient of a linear term. So 0 0.0025. And again, to find the critical points, we set this equal to 0. So there is a number of ways to solve this, but I think the easiest is to multiply both sides by x squared, right? So if I multiply this by x squared, then the x squareds cancel, and I'm left with negative 400. Multiply this by x squared, I have plus 0 0.0025x squared, and then 0 times x squared, obviously, is just 0. So now we need to solve this equation. So if I add 400 to both sides and then divide both sides by 0 0.0025, so I have 400 over... 0 0.0025, that turns out to be 160,000. So that's x squared. So that means x would be plus or minus 400 when I take the square root. So clearly we don't care about the negative, right? We, in order, to, if we're looking at um, production level, we have to produce a positive amount of something. So x equals 400 would be the amount that would minimize our average cost. And to verify that it's a minimum, once again, we can um, we can take the derivative, the second derivative, all right? So let's look at C double prime of x. So now I'm looking at this right here, and I want to take the derivative of that, 
So I would end up with, again, this right here is actually negative 400 x to the negative 2. So if I take the derivative of that, I'm going to end up with 800 x to the negative 3 or 800 over x cubed. This constant, um, the derivative of that is 0. So this is what I'm left with for c bar double prime, the second derivative. And so I want to evaluate that at this point to see if I end up with a maximum or a minimum. So c prime, c bar double prime of 400 equals 800 over 400 cubed, which I don't really care if, what the number is. I just want to know what the sign is. I know that's going to be positive, right? So this function, my average cost function, is going to be concave up in the area of 400, which means that 400 has to be a minimum, which is what we wanted. Okay, so that's the second example. Now finally for a third example, and the final example for, um, for this lecture, we want to look at um, something that's a little bit more involved in terms of trying to um, construct the functions that we need in order to solve the problem. So this says a business sells 2,000 units of a product per month at a price of $10 each. It can sell 200 more items per month for each 25 cent reduction in price. What price will maximize monthly revenue? So ultimately we want to maximize revenue. That's the big picture. So if you recall, revenue is the number of units sold. So I'm going to call x the number of units sold times the price per unit. P would be the price per unit. Right, so hopefully that makes sense. You look at the price that each of these things cost times the total number that you sell. That's going to give you revenue. Um, but in order to, to take into account the information we have here, so we have this extra information. We know how much we would sell at $10 each, but we have this extra information that says we could sell 200 more by dropping the price by 25 cents. But there's a limit, right, to the to how many times you can drop that before you're going to be making less than if you just sold it for a little bit more, right? Sure, you can you could sell, you know, millions of these if you were giving them away for free, but then your revenue is zero because you're giving them away, right? You don't want to reduce the price too much, but you would like to sell more items. So we want to kind of balance those two in order to maximize revenue. And what we're going to need for that is a demand function. And the demand function is basically price as a function of units sold. So in other words, we want we want to, we need to find an expression for price that is a function of x, all right? So this indicates that what we have is a linear situation because every 25 cent reduction results in 200 more items being sold. Um, so what we need to find then is um, the equation of a line that would that would relate the number of units that are demanded or sold um, with the price per unit. So notice then for um, the demand um, at, well, the, 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 we have 2,000 sold at $10. So we can kind of think of that as a point on our line. And then we would have 2,200 sold if our price was 975 per unit. So we can use this information, all right? So as we see where this came from, um, by dropping this 1 down from 10 to 9.75, we drop it 25 cents, then instead of selling 2,000, we're going to sell 2,200. So these are two points in our line. We could have gone, we could have dropped it by a dollar and added 800 more if we wanted to. Um, but we just need this to get the slope because this is linear. We're saying there's a constant relationship between the number of units sold and the price. So one way to think of this then is that I'm going to um, I have a 25% or sorry, a 25 cent drop, right? I'm going from nine seven from 10 to 9.75. So it's a 25 cent drop. And then at 9.75, I sell 200 at $10. I sell, sorry, at 9.75, I sell 2,200 at $10. I sell 2,000. Another way to think of this is this is just a slope equation, right? This is the change in Y over the change in X. All right, and that's going to give me 
it's going to be negative. We know that because as the price goes down, the items um, number of items sold goes up. So this is going to turn out to be negative 0 0.00125. All right. Uh, and again, because we know this is going to be linear, we just need a point on the line. So when would it do this? Is say p minus 10 equals, and we have our slope, negative 0 0.00125 and then it's x minus 2,000. So this is just our point slope form of the line. We have um, a point on the line, so since p is the dependent variable, we have p minus 10 equals the slope times x minus 2,000, which is the independent variable. Now if we rearrange that, uh, we would multiply through by the slope and add 10 to both sides, we get that p, price as a function of x, or our demand function, is negative point zero zero one two five x plus twelve point five and now we can put this in for p to get our revenue function so revenue now as a function of x is its x number of units sold times the demand which is negative point zero zero one two five x so demand is really just a it's a, it's a price function, but it's price as a function of the number of units sold. So then we multiply through by x, we get negative 0.00125x squared plus 12.5x. Now we have revenue, and this is what we would like to maximize. This is what we said at the beginning. So we're going to proceed as we did in the previous examples, take the derivative, all right, so this is going to give me negative 0 0.0025x plus 12.5. We set it equal to 0, so I can subtract 12.5 from both sides and then divide by negative 0 0.0025, so I get that x equals negative 12.5 over negative 0 0.0025, which turns out to be... 5,000. And again, if we want to determine whether or not this is a max or a min, take the second derivative. It's actually quite easy in this case because we're just going to get back, we're just going to get back negative 0 0.0025, which is always negative, regardless of what value you put in for x. So we're, our, our x is 5,000, but because there's no x involved here, it's just a constant, we know that this is going to be concave down, so I'm going to have a maximum. Okay, now, on all these problems, I highly suggest when you think you have an answer, because we have an answer here, right, 5,000, but we need to go back and read the question and make sure um, that we've answered it. So the ultimately the question is, what price maximizes monthly revenue? What we found is that what number of units sold would maximize monthly revenue. Um, but we have this demand function here, right? So this tells me what the price is as a function of the units sold. So now I need to go back to... Um, to this function and put in 5,000. So the demand or the price at 5,000 units is negative 0.00125 times 5,000 plus 12.5. Um, and that is going to be $6.25. So that is that's the answer ultimately that they're asking for. This is part of the answer, but this is the main one that this question is asking because it's asking what the price is. So in this one, we had a little bit more work to do in terms of finding the revenue function. Um, to find the revenue function, we needed to find the demand function, and we needed to use information given to us in the problem to find that demand function, plug it into the revenue function, and then it's very similar to the first problem we did where we're... Um, trying to maximize revenue, except at the end, we need to find our units sold to find out what price will maximize monthly revenue.